Hi, how are you? This is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Welcome in to today's episode where I want to talk about how much alcohol you can drink and get away with it. What is the safe amount of alcohol you can drink? And the reason I want to talk about this is because over the last couple of weeks, I've seen an increasing number of people commenting on my YouTube channel saying things like, drinking in moderation is good for you, but then if you go too far, it becomes bad for you. Or red wine is good for your heart in moderation, and so on and so on. And so I want to talk about how we've got to this position and whether it's true. But before I do, let me just remind you, we're two weeks to go now, two weeks until London Quit Drinking Boot Camp. So if you want to come, today is the day you should secure your ticket because this may be the last UK date of the year. If you want to come to boot camp and deal with problem drinking in one amazing day, go to stopdrinkingexpert.com right now. So is there a safe amount of alcohol? And it would be nice to just give you a clear answer on this and say, yes, it's this much. But we're in this kind of strange place where everyone believes certain things about alcohol and they believe them if it serves their purpose. So, for example, the whole, you know, red wine is good for your heart story that so many people believe started from a piece of research maybe 40 years ago where researchers looked at mortality rates in different nations around the world. And they noticed something quite interesting about France. They saw that French people had a significantly lower risk of developing cardio cardiovascular disease in later life. And they were confused by this because they also noticed that the French nation also consumed higher amounts of saturated fats from these, you know, these heavy uh, age oak cheeses and these cured meats and things like that. So they thought, well, what's going on here? How can they have lower heart disease if they're eating higher amounts of saturated fat? And they, this is the problem. This is where they leaped to an assumption. And they looked at the data and they said, well, it must be because they drink more red wine than most nations per capita. And that was the basis of that assumption. But it, it's spurious, isn't it? It's, it they're, 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 you can only say that because that's all you can see in the data. There's nothing else that leaps out. And so you go, well, that must be it then. But that's not good enough to make a statement like that. But the problem is people leap on things that supports their current view. This is why when you see a story on Facebook that gin helps you lose weight, it gets likes and shares and comments like crazy. People tag each other in them. You see it all the time. There you go. The people tag their friend Linda. Hey, Linda, great news. At last, we can carry on. People love it because drinkers love the social proof of this stuff. Because the, to drink alcohol, we have to ignore some pretty black and white evidence that what we're doing is insane. You know, alcohol is a known carcinogenic. That's not a debatable point anymore. We know it causes eight fatal cancers, including bowel cancer and breast cancer. We know that it's a registered poison. If you try and buy alcohol in its pure form, it will come in a bottle with a skull and crossbones on it. Exactly the same as you see on the bottle of bleach that you buy at the supermarket. And so if you think about it, making the statement that drinking a small amount of poison every day is good for you doesn't make any sense. It's absolutely insane. And so we need these stories that the alcohol industry continually peddles through their PR departments. We need these as drinkers to justify an insane act. And just, you know, open your eyes and see what's going on in social media. You'll see stories that have absolutely no evidence behind them. Uh, whiskey protects you from having a heart attack. Gin helps you lose weight. Red wine is good for your heart. You'll see them all the time. Just look a little deeper and see how crazy the comments are going. The truth is, if red wine was good for your heart, then when you had a heart attack and you went to the hospital, the doctors would go, he's having a heart attack. Merlot, stat. 
but they don't, do they? <laughs> you know, if you get any sort of heart problem and you go to your GP, they never, the doctor never goes, right, well, I know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to write your prescription uh, for six tins of beer a day. There you go. Off you go. It, it never happens because it's nonsense. Yeah, so that, that red wine story was a leap. They took some data and they went, well, OK, that must be the answer. And then that was sent out as a press release and media outlets and TV stations and radio stations around the world ran with it. And the reason this red wine is good for your heart story became so popular and so widespread is that on the evening news in the United States on one channel, a, the news anchor made a off the cuff throwaway comment that wasn't scripted at the end of the news bulletin. So they talked about the story from France and the news anchor, as he was wrapping up, just before he shuffled his paper and pretended to be talking to someone else. He said, well, from this news anchor, it's a big cheers to red wine, something like that. Fade to black credits roll. And the alcohol industry went crazy. They were so happy because now it had been on the news that red wine is good for your heart. And so they sent out a million press releases. And they've been doing it every day since. That's why you still see it today. It had just been on the evening news, endorsed by a celebrity that red wine is good for your heart. It was a license to print money. And they've been peddling that story ever since. But the truth about research and data is you can make it say anything you want. And I know this personally because I used to run radio stations in the United Kingdom, commercial radio stations. My pay, my success as a program director of a radio station was entirely judged on my listening figures. And every three months we would get our listening figures, the research would come. And it didn't matter what the research said, you could, you could find a good news story there. Even if the whole radio station had tanked, we'd lost half our audience you could still find something to stand up in front of the staff, in front of the shareholders, in front and put on the air to be happy about. You'd have to drill down a bit into the data. You could maybe have to, you maybe have to say, well, between 30 and 40 year old females, who are the listeners that we really care about? We've increased our audience share. So we're celebrating. It's garbage and it still happens today. But you can make data say anything you want, and that's the problem. And the reason this story keeps getting propagated that alcohol in small amounts is good for you is, for, is because people take a look at some data, pull out the bit they want, and then they, they send it out to further their own needs and to enhance their own situation. So every now and again, you'll see a really old person on the news, someone who's managed to get to 110, 120 years old. And the journalist will always ask the same boring question. And it is, what's the secret to long life? Same question every time. And every now and again, the person being interviewed will say, I put the secret to my long life down to my daily glass of whiskey, wine, beer, whatever you want. And that will get shared like crazy on social media and everyone will go nuts about it and say, well, there's the proof. If, if alcohol was really bad for you, this guy would definitely wouldn't have made it to be 120 years old. So I can continue doing what I'm doing. Garbage. And the reason it's garbage is this. We don't know enough information to make any sort of statement. That 120 year old guy could have the best genetics ever. His DNA could be bulletproof. It's just really solid. And so despite the fact that alcohol is a carcinogenic and it's a poison and it's really bad for you, his genetics is so good, so strong, that it protected him from the harm, from the poison. And, you know, let's take, for example, one of the craziest stories that you've, you'll see. Gin helps you lose weight. You can create that story out of the data if you want to. All you have to do is you need to find 100 people who've lost weight, ask them if they've ever, ever drank gin. Maybe 60 or 70% of them will say, yeah, I've drank gin. Great. 
Gin helps you lose weight. Get that story out tomorrow, please. And all the drinkers like, 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 share, 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 comment, comment, comment. Because why? Because it endorses and justifies something they're doing that subconsciously they know is insane. Is drinking in moderation good for you at all? Unfortunately, no. And that was proved about 18 months ago by Cambridge University. And they used the data from 600,000 people to try and answer that question conclusively. And what they discovered is past data that had suggested that modest drinkers live longer than teetotalers had a fundamental flaw in the research. They had failed to ask the people who don't drink alcohol why they don't drink alcohol. Some people don't drink because they don't want to. They don't like the taste of it. They don't want to get addicted and various other reasons like that. But some people don't drink alcohol because they've previously had a problem and already started to suffer the health consequences of doing that. So if somebody drinks to a problematic level for 20 years and starts to get problems with their liver and then stops for health reasons, and then all of a sudden someone comes along and asks them a question for a research study, do you drink alcohol? And they say no. And then they drop dead two weeks later. The research has been going, well, there you go, that proves it. If you don't drink alcohol, you're going to drop dead. <laughs> the research previously done failed to separate the people who were not drinking because they wanted to from the people who were not drinking because they couldn't anymore because they'd already damaged their health so significantly that if they drank, their life would be over in months. And so what the Cambridge research did was it took all those health-related non-drinkers out of the equation. And they looked at the data based on that. And the conclusion that they came to was, there is no safe amount of alcohol. Zero drinks is where you're at. Now, some drinkers who are still in denial will choose to ignore that. They'll say, well, that's just one piece of research. I'll go with the other ones. And that's fine. And look, if you, if you want to drink, drink. But don't lie to yourself. Don't, you know, cut the bullshit. Don't, wh who are you fooling? You're only fooling yourself. If you want to drink alcohol every day, then do it. But don't lie to yourself. Don't say, because I'm doing it because it's good for my health. Say, I'm doing it because it's highly addictive and I'm hooked and I can't stop. And I like to get drunk. But don't. Don't demean yourself by saying, I only do it for health reasons. That's total garbage. So listen, we'll wrap up there. Thank you very much for joining me today. What I want you to do, look, if you're worried about your drinking at all, do something about it today. The best time to have dealt with this was 10 years ago. But that's gone. So there's no point talking about it. The next best time is now. Not tomorrow, not in half an hour, now. So go to StopDrinkingExpert.com, sign up for my webinar, get the free book, and then make a decision about what you're going to do. But please, if you're worried about your drinking, stop putting this off. I did that for 10 years, and it nearly killed me. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, my name's Craig Beck. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I always get back to you. Uh, I always enjoy a bit of banter on YouTube as well. Thanks for watching.